All right, what's up guys? It's Andrew from Long Range Gear. Today I'm working on an MV4500. For this customer, we're gonna be converting the round top shift cover to a square top shift cover. We're gonna be reusing most of the components from this one. I'm gonna give you the parts list for uh, what you need to get this done uh, in your own shop without having to buy a fully loaded, brand new square top top cover. So we're gonna keep the cost low and I'll show you how to do it now. Okay guys, so what we have here uh, is an early style top cover for an NV4500. These things work just fine if you got a nice work truck and it's in working shape. The, the problem is um, the wear, I'm going to try to get everything so you can see it. Um, the wear item is this little ring inside here. When you got the spring pressure sitting on the shifter, pushing it down in there, a lot of movement, spring pressure causes the wear here so you know you got to do some work to this thing to swap it out but if you're going to be swapping it out why not upgrade so you can take this top cover and it's directly interchangeable with a square top unit problem is fully loaded square top units to just do a rip it off and throw this one on they're really expensive they seem to be sold out like all the time but you can always get a top shelf for a pretty decent for a decent price so, which means an unloaded top cover again they're interchangeable so even if you have an early transmission uh, you can put one of these on. The benefit for this one, uh, I have a video, I don't have the shifter around here right now, but the, the shifter is a little bit different. You can swap out the shifter without having to swap the, uh, the whole top cover out. Like with this one, you're just kind of screwed, it's all unitized. But this one, you can actually remove the shifter, you can put different sticks on. Insulation a little bit easier because it's so low profile. So to get this done, uh, number one, you're going to need this part number. 334756A. So this is the shell. Everything inside of here will transfer uh, will transfer over aside from a few parts this is your um, fifth and reverse shift rail three four shift rail one two shift rail the shift rails will work the shift forks for uh, three and four and one and two uh, will transfer over the one that will not transfer over is reverse fork here so the reverse fork for a new model this is for the late style part number is two five six six one I got this from Torque King four by four Pretty sure I bought their last one. The downside to this is there's a national back order right now on these forks. I can't, I can't find them anywhere. This was the last one I found. Sorry, everybody. You know, you'll have to wait until they start making them again. 25661, this is a mandatory part. You cannot reuse the other one. I'll show you the design changes when we get it out. Here's another absolutely mandatory component. This is the shift lug for one and two. Uh, there's the part number. And this will replace, you can kind of see the difference. This has got like a, a spring-loaded setup here for the, for the bias. Um, the new style one will not have that. You'll end up installing it just like this. So this is another mandatory item. And the other mandatory item, top cover small parts kit. 334001A. This has got like your springs and all the roll pins and gaskets and things. So you'll see when we get into there. So those three, absolutely necessary for this conversion, plus the top cover. And that's if everything in here is in good enough shape to reuse. Our 1-2 fork is in rough shape. So we actually are going to be replacing that one, the brand new fork. So the part number for the 1-2 fork, 18303. When you, when you start looking at these individual components, you're going to see part numbers listed in two different ways. There will be a six digit number, maybe with a letter identifier like this one. Um, or there will be a five digit part number which is like what came from New Venture. There will be a number assigned in both of those formats and normally if you search for one or the other you'll, you'll still get the same component. So the interchange number like if you were to go on to uh, transmission parts distributors, Transstar, Cobra, Trans, you know any of those places, Allstate, Allstate's a really good one. If you just type in the interchange part number like for this, the one two shift fork, if you just type in 18303 this should pop up. This is a nice new shift fork. We're going to be replacing that. If you were going to swap out 3-4, the interchange part number for that is 18302. Ours is dirty. We're definitely going to throw out the parts washer, but it seems to be in good shape, so we're going to reuse ours. If you decide, and I highly recommend it, your 3-4 shift lug, I mean, since these other two are going to be brand new, I always throw in a new shift lug for 3-4, just so that way everything that engages with your new shifter is brand new. So the interchange part number for that is going to be 18863. Six-digit number is 467. 960. So again, you'll see these part numbers in two different formats. Um, manual transmission industry uh, is kind of inconsistent with that, but as long as you have one of the two numbers, you can search for it, you're fine. A part that you definitely need here is this oil baffle. I'm sorry, I don't have the part number for this. The only place I've found them that sells them is Torque King 4x4. I got a handful of them here. 
yeah, QU10160, you can get a handful of them. This to keep stuff from puking out of the breather. So if your breaker is getting off, you have to replace it. It's not an option, you have to replace it or you will just have gear oil everywhere. So here's your different shift rails. I also want to point out, I'm giving you all these numbers so that you can actually build this from scratch. You can order everything that you see here minus that reverse shift fork at the moment. You can order everything that you see here to build one from scratch too. So we're, we're covering two birds with one stone here. So the NV4500 reverse and fifth shift fork, which would be this guy right here, 334628D David. You also might see, oh, wait a minute. I'm dumb, sorry guys. That's my customer number I gave you for this shift lug, 467960. I'm just a stupid idiot. Uh, customer, don't disregard. Beep. Uh, 334628D David, reverse and overdrive shift rail. You don't need to replace these. I, I have a handful of each for repairs as they come up. What we're gonna do for this one, we're gonna pound out these roll pins here. We're gonna knock them out, we're gonna reuse the rail, uh, put the new fork on and reinstall it, and it's gonna be just fine. Uh, 334628D is the reverse uh, and overdrive shift fork that's in the top cover. 334628A alpha is the 1 2 shift rail, which will be this guy down here. Let's see, 18320 is gonna be the 3 4 shift rail in the center. Again, we're gonna be reusing ours. And don't be confused when you shift, when you uh, search for the uh, fifth gear shift rail, 334628. This is the rail, it's, it's much smaller. Here, I'll show you. Actually, here, I gotta, I gotta use one out of this transmission. It's this short little guy that goes through the case. It actually engages on the fork there. This is mounted into the case. So when you look for fifth gear shift rail, that's this guy. Replace them anyway. I mean, they're super cheap. We always do. Make sure when you're looking for the fifth and reverse shift rail, you don't accidentally get this one. Or buy both. Whatever. There's going to be, you're going to see where these go. They fit under these little guys. These are little plungers. There's a spring underneath and this provides detent pressure. Provides some detent pressure on the shift rail to keep it in position. You don't necessarily have to replace these, uh, but I always do, especially if you're putting on a new shift rail, you want like a good contact riding surface, right? So the interchange number for these, I'm sorry, I couldn't find the bag, but the interchange part number for these is 16841. You need three of them, highly recommend doing that. Again, the top cover part number 334756A alpha. Uh, it's also helpful because I've never really been able to successfully uh, pull one of these out without kind of Galling it up. Torquing 4x4 offers these as an assembly. Um, so it's a vent breather tube. You just kind of pound it in there. It's got the little, the little vent baffle and the rubber piece. This is all you need. You can, you can find these. I'm sorry, I don't know the interchange number for this, but you can find these just bare, pretty much anywhere. But QK10104 from Torquing 4x4. It's all in one piece. The other thing you might consider replacing is the reverse uh, reverse light switch, but you know you can find those anywhere. So let's get started here. So basically, what you got to do uh, to get going here, there's a series of roll pins: one, two, three, four, um, five, six, seven, that are all holding these on there. Now there's no way to access them um, from the factory. These were not designed to be serviced in the factory service manual it states that um but that's not to say you can't obviously we can so you're going to need to drill which yes causes you to ruin this top cover use a use a bit basically you're just going to guesstimate where this roll pin is going to need to pop through drill a hole on the top side to guesstimate where it's going to come out not quite we're off a little bit that's okay Look at it. Okay, so as you can see, I got three drills hole, three <laughs> So as you can see, I drilled uh, three holes here. This one, I was off a little bit, so I adjusted, and then you can see the other two, I nailed them right on top. All right, so since I'm basically the worst YouTuber on earth, uh, camera wasn't on, I had to pause it. Um, camera wasn't on for some time, so I'm gonna go back over. Um, this is obviously very rudimentary. You just guess, drill some holes, punch out the, the forks right here, You'll slide this one forward, and you can punch them down, um, minus this, this one up here. But you'll slide the entire shift fork forward. You could just grab onto the fork and slide it forward or pry it forward with a screwdriver. Um, you'll punch that one down. You'll punch all three of these down, um, and then she'll be free. So then what you'll need to do, you'll notice it has these caps that are pressed in right here um, to keep to retain them and keep the water and stuff out. 
And all you need to do is take another 5-30 seconds, punch, and you'll see three holes right here. One, two, three. Stick them right in there like that, punch through, and that will push the little caps out. Just come right out. No big deal. So once that's done, now the only thing holding the shift forks in place is a little detent underneath these these little springs right here. Yeah. But anyway, that's where these little plungers ride, and there's little grooves cut into the shift fork. So all you do is twist the shift fork slightly, so get these get these grooves right here off of the plunger and then she is free and you can pull it right out now you may have to get behind on this side and like tap with a hammer or pry or something like that just be really careful with them because obviously um, there we go because obviously if you're going to be reusing these you want them to be in the best shape possible Now, see, forks off. Now, when you yank this out, uh, have it either pointed away from your face or somewhere else or whatever, because it's going to go flying. I just cover it. That one didn't go flying. So now you have your little plunger here. As you can see, these get kind of flattened, and these ones are nice and round still. That's why I always replace these; they're so cheap. Uh, but if you're not, if you don't want to do that, you you don't have to. They'll work. So now clean off your shift fork, inspect it, make sure you don't got any crazy like, make sure you didn't screw it up. And as long as it's smooth where everything's gonna ride, you're good, you're golden. You can reuse this, so set it aside. What I like to do is do the outer ones first. You'll see why I like to do that um, shortly. Let me just take them. Is this in the shot? God, I'm the worst YouTuber ever there. Okay, now we can spin it. Okay, so we got these, those guys off of the detent. And then, let's start let's slide in out. So I just drill a hole right about here. Now, what you can do is use a long punch, stick it through here, and you can just drive. Okay. Okay. Got it out. Can be a little bit of a struggle. That's for sure. So we got this free. Don't be don't be afraid if you know you gotta kind of smack it a little bit, but I, I put the punch through the back side there and I was driving the end, making very being very careful not to like go off the edge. because uh, this does ride back there. So let's talk about this center rail here for a second. So you got these little plungers on your three, four, and one and two. You'll notice in the end here. Let's see, I'm trying to get it to where you guys can see it. There you go. Um, you're going to notice when you're taking this out that there is these little pins right here. Um, there's a second one of these. It went. I don't know where it went. Maybe I'll watch the video and I'll find it. Um, but these, these little pins, will ride in the center and interlock right here on these notches. See just like this. So when you're taking all this stuff out, like be careful, this center pin right here, the center pin rides on the inside of this rail. We haven't taken it out yet obviously, but you'll see what I'm talking about when you get it apart.
Oh, all right. We're getting there. Look at it. Bingo. So as you can see, this is how these shift rails go together. This is if you were looking from the top down. This little fella rides right in here. Okay, just in the center of that. And then these little plungers go on either side just like this. And those little plungers there, these little plungers are how um, it makes it so you can't move two shift rails at a time. So when this shift rail shifts forward, it pushes that one out. Just, you know, a little bit. So it pushes that one out and locks this one into place. Um, and vice versa, you push it that way, it locks this one, these two into place. So when you have this apart, you'll notice there's a hole inside. There's a, on this side, this side, this side. Um, those are little passageways for all this stuff to sit. So your top cover's bare. Pretty sweet, huh? Chuck it in the bucket. So you got your three plungers here. Now, let's, uh, let's talk about how this all works together. So, in this one, this is the center 3-4 uh, rail, and you got this tiny little plunger, this tiny little plunger I told you not to use, or lose, <laughs> definitely use it. Save it. Um, when you put it back in the shift rail, you'll notice it shifts, moves back and forth nice and smooth. Well, when, when, when this is in place inside of the top cover, um, these little guys right here, these go, they fit right here, right here, and they interlock with this little pin. They interlock with this little pin and move it side to side. And that's how this thing locks you. Uh, it, it, it won't allow you to shift into to shift two shift rails at once essentially when you move this um, it pushes these plungers out and locks these into place and it will only move these if these are in the appropriate position um, otherwise you just won't be able to do it so um, that's kinda how that interlock dealy bob works now we're ready to start assembly just got our nice top cover here alright sorry my parts washers running we're just gonna have to make do I got you gotta get this done. So here's your small parts kit, 334001A. This has got all the stuff to do either tie or either kind of top. So you got rings for both, you have caps for both. Obviously we're not going to use these because these are for the old style. Now we're not going to use these because we don't use them anymore. Um, you have a gasket for your switch. These are the caps we are going to use. Uh, your roll pins, obviously save all those. We're not going to use this one because that's for the old style. Um, now this is your new little crossover pin here. Um, I don't use these because, oh this one actually worked fine uh, in the past. Uh, so it looks like this one actually fits pretty good in an old rail. But, so this new pin fits pretty good in the old rail here. Um, you know, just fine, shifts over just fine. but. When you put it into a new rail, it it's bound up. It's not good. The machining is not very good on these. So, um, if you have if you're putting in a new rail, you may want to open this up a little bit. I've also just found that using the old pin, using this old pin um, <clears throat> in a new rail works okay. See, it works just fine. It moves in and out. So. Um, but since I'm reusing this rail, I might use the new pin to save that one. So as far as the springs, uh, here we got an old one uh, that matches up with these black ones. These are really stiff. Um, these ones are a little bit softer. Um, I'm going to use these in this in this rail here. So let's we'll start this off. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Use a little bit of lube here. Drop that sucker in. That guy in. Just like that. Now let's say you mix up your rails here. The way to tell the rail, so obviously the end with these three detents goes 
down into this end, right? So let's, so let's see you screw these up pretty good. Okay. No, oh my God, I don't know. So this side has got some notches. This is for your big fork, your one, two fork. And that goes on this side. And this guy has got a little clearance and just the one roll pin for the one roll pin on this fork. That one goes on this side, okay? So this is the order they go in. So what I like to do, well, let's do, one, let's do three, four first. Put a little bit of lube on this sucker. Make sure this end is going that way. Let's slide this puppy in. So then you gotta depress this little guy right here. Let's just depress it a little bit. Slide it in. You don't want to get too crazy. You don't want to screw it up. There you go. Now, a little bit of lube. Lube makes everything better, boys. Good life lesson. Let me show here. There we go. Okay, shift rails are in place, the detents are in place, now you got to set this up. Uh, basically you have to put everything on the rails in the order they're going to be in so you can finish moving them inward. So, the one, one, two, new three, four, the new fifth reverse, so those are the shift lugs, right, that's kind of how that's gonna go. One, two. Right in here just like so. So we're gonna slide this guy into place. And then, now this is where stuff gets weird. And it turns into a pain in the butt. This little port right here. And that is how we're gonna drop the little detents into here. Push this guy down first. See, that's this little hole right here is where these stupid things gotta line up. Okay, get it down into place. You're gonna center the, the middle detent slot on the little detent plunger, and then you're gonna rotate it forward, and it should click into place. So that's showing that this fork is in a neutral position. That's where we need it to be in order to drop this stupid thing. Gotcha, bitch. Then, bring this guy down. Um, and on this one, we're going to put the pin in. The four pin. So what I like to do, I set the pin in and I have to kind of hold it and then push this all the way down to where there's some resistance so the pin doesn't fall out. And when you rotate it, now that is not in, so that's going to be like as if it was in uh, fourth gear. I'm going to give it a little tappy. one time, you can make sure it's in the center thing, and now it's, that one's in neutral too. Put some lube on it. Ooh, now that one's in. If your other forks are not in neutral for this one, like if they're not in the neutral position, this fork won't go into place. Now, what we gotta do, shammer in all of our forks. Now we're gonna take this little guy.
all the detents are in, and then we're going to do the forks. Alright, all our forks are on. Now, this one's kind of hard. So we have to plug all of these, and then we have to plug this. So we'll probably use a little bit of sticky, sealy stuff of your retaining compound of your choice. What you want to do is get something flat. You may not need to add sealant really, but I really don't like leaks, so we do. I really, really don't like leaks. And I really don't like it when people don't fix their leaks. Okay, so those caps are in. Now we gotta do one right here. So what I'm trying to do here, put a larger surface a flat thing that has a larger surface to drive this in so that way you don't drive it too far and it will help you drive it flat bingo see she's in place double check make sure all the holes are plugged so last thing um, I was harping on it before make sure you clean it up real good but this little baffle has got to clip on right there. It just clips right on. It won't go nowhere. Clippy clip clip. And then you gotta punch in this little guy. Sometimes these can be a real pain in the butt. There would actually probably be a lot of benefit to doing it first. Ah! Get back in there. She set in place. Give it a little bit of an upward angle. Alright, so once you get that driven in there, you now have a completed, sealed, new, remanufactured top cover. Compatible with a uh, four bolt square shifter for a fraction of the cost of new. So for those that aren't aware, uh, the square top makes it compatible to run a square top shifter, just like this, with a detachable um, assembly and you use these little alignment screws get in there get in your home these little alignment dowels with your screws if I can ever find it when you tighten them down just like that get your seed keeps everything square so you use a detachable shifter like this and then we really like the advanced adapter sticks um, they're much heavier. This is a billet steel piece um, with threaded rod on a solid steel rod. And then this this fitting at the end is M10 by 1.5, so you can put any kind of like custom shifter ball on there. There you go. And now you can, well, brand new shifter setup. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We're all finished with our top cover. It came out great, you know. You can pop this right onto your new or old style NV4500. Much crisper shifting with the new springs and detents and everything like that. And um, if you need to replace any shift forks, this is a great time to do it. Um, so this the shift rod assembly with a knob from Advanced Adapters is about uh, $66. Um, the shifter uh, is an actual GM unit, so this is about $35. Uh, I did a video about using these components in this top cover. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. 
The isolator and hardware is somewhere around 10 bucks. The top cover is like 140. Um, when they're not in back order, these forks are about 60 bucks. Uh, the top cover kit, I believe somewhere around 50, something like that. Um, so if, it, if your old round top shifter is in decent shape, you can do this whole conversion for very little money. A new square shifter assembly with Dodge brand new components here gets really expensive. You know, you're knocking on like eight, nine hundred dollars or whatever. You don't got to do that. Follow these instructions, these part numbers I give you. Um, there'll be a part list in the description. Um, and you can have a brand new top cover ready to drop on and nice crisp, crisp shipping. If you don't want to do this yourself, Long Range Gear can do it for you. Um, visit us at www.lrgdiesel.com. Uh, you can call the shop 509-499-0760. We also are on Instagram and Facebook um, at Long Range Gear. And uh, check us out. You can hit us up um, on any of the social media platforms or shoot me an email or call. Um, we can definitely hook you up with all this stuff, okay? If you have any questions when you're doing it, I'm happy to answer them as well. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, check out some of my other videos.